Good morning, and welcome to the Swiftcurt Museum. My name is Melissa Shaw, and I am the museum director here. As we begin, and in the spirit of respect and reconciliation, we acknowledge that we are gathered on Treaty 4 territory, the ancestral land of the Cree, Anishinaabe, Dakota, Nakota, Lakota nations, and the home of the Métis people. Thank you for attending this important celebration as we take time to show our respect and honor these four veterans. The Veteran Banner Program started in 2016 and has seen 41 banners hung in Memorial Park and leading the street to the Legion. Following today's ceremony, these four banners will join the others in Memorial Park around the cenotaph that was constructed in 1927 to honor the Swift Current's 209th Battalion Infantry from World War I. As the years passed, the cenotaph has been dedicated to the veterans of subsequent wars such as World War II, where all of today's honorees served in. At this time, I'd like to call His Worship, Mayor Al Bridal, to bring greetings on behalf of the City of Swift Current. Thank you, Melissa. Good morning, everyone. It's my pleasure to be here today on behalf of the City of Swift Current Council and Administration to celebrate the unveiling of these Veterans Banner Program. <clears throat> I'd like to recognize the Swift Current Museum for the initiative which pays tribute to our local veterans and active service members. As an ongoing legacy project, it ensures that future generations will have the opportunity to honor and remember local veterans with continued recognition and respect. These large double-sized full-colored banners can be seen on a lamp post downtown and within Memorial Park, as Melissa had mentioned, as we lead up to Remembrance Day ceremonies. Our population who vivid, vividly remembers Canada's involvement in the world wars must not become the last to remember. And we must draw a new generation's attention to Canada's armed forces still serving in present day conflicts. The Veteran Banner Project focuses on our community's veterans and service members who have unselfishly enlisted to protect and preserve our way of life from past to present. When the realization of their sacrifice hits closer to home, it elicits our emotions, our gratitude and awe, and these emotions in turn trigger remembrance. This is how we help to create a legacy of respect. Thank you to the organizers of today's events, and I'll now turn things back over to Melissa Shaw. Thank you, Your Worship, for your kind words today. It is now my distinct honor to introduce these four veterans that we are here today to honor in alphabetical order. John Burnett. John Burnett was born on November 9th, 1919 to Walter and Jane Burnett. He was, his siblings were Jean, Walter, David, Angus, and Isabel. He attended school in Swinton School, a small country school southwest of Swift Current. In 1941, John enlisted for military service in Regina. He joined the 6th Anti-Tank Regiment in Petawawa, Ontario, and sailed from Dilbert Camp to, on the Queen Mary, destined for England. John saw duty in Belgium, Holland, France, and Germany. He was discharged in 1946 and headed home to the prairies and Saskatchewan. He farmed in the summer and did electrical work in the winter, a trade he learned in the Army. He never talked about the war, but he did keep a large collection of red poppies in his desk. He married Lillian Targeson, and together they raised their five boys, Lester, Lyle, Douglas, Dean, and Garth. Their boys all married and had 12 grandchildren to complete their family. Thank you for your service, John Burnett. Stroker 2 C. Stephen Senek. Stephen Stanley Senek was born on March 5, 1919 to Joseph and Dora Senek in Swift Current, Saskatchewan. He was the third of six children born in the family. Bill and Anne were his older siblings, and Mike, Rose, and Joyce joined their family after him. Steve attended school at Omen and SCCI and was a member of St. Stephen's Anglican Church, where there is a plaque in his memory. In 1937, Stephen went to BC to visit his older siblings, and on August 7, 1939, he enlisted in the Royal Canadian Navy at Eskimo, BC, before an outbreak of the Second World War. 
Steve Ship went to Hawaii in 1939, <clears throat> but he returned home on leave for Christmas that year, which was the last time he saw his family. In May of 1940, Steve was transferred to the HMC Fraser, an escort to the Ocean Convoy sailing from Halifax. He was a two-sea stroker on board the Fraser. The Fraser was tasked with joining the destroyer HMCS Restigouche and the cruiser HMS Calcutta on an operation aerial to rescue 4,000 refugees trapped in the German on the coast of Bordeaux, France. Following the successful evacuation of St. Jean du Les, the three ships were lined up and returning to England. When a rough sea and poor visibility, the Fraser was in a collision with the Calcutta. The Fraser split into three pieces, losing 47 of its 181 sailors in the Georgian Straits on June 25, 1940. Stephen Senek, at age 21, was one of the ones lost in Canada's first naval disaster of World War II. He is remembered on the Halifax Memorial in Nova Scotia and in the hearts of his two surviving sisters and six nieces and their families. Thank you for your service, 2C Stroker Stephen Senek. Wallace M. Wally Shirley. Wallace M. Wally Shirley was born in Swift Current to Alma and Oscar Shirley on February 19, 1926. Oscar was a grain buyer, and as a result, in his dad's youth, they moved around southwest Saskatchewan. Wally went to primary school in Scottsgard, but also lived in Admiral and Beverly. In 1943, at the age of 17 and a half, Wally joined the Royal Canadian Navy training at the Naval Base in Regina. He served as an electrician on the HMS Jamaica and later on the HMCS Ontario, which were cruisers. While on the Jamaica, he journeyed to Liverpool, England with supplies, traveled in the Irish Sea to the Norwegian Sea to Spitsburg across the Arctic Circle. They then went back to Scapa Flow Base on the northern coast of Scotland, then to Iceland for a convoy escort duty, sailing Morask, Koala Bay, and mainly above the Arctic Circle then back down to Scapa, working their way to Edinburgh, then Portsmouth. Following a brief, brief leave back home, he was posted on a new ship, the HMCS Ontario. There were five people from Swift Current on this ship. In 1945, they, uh, they were the first, and as it happened, the last crew to board her since the war ended while they were on board. She was built in Belfast, Ireland. They sailed to Liverpool for supplies, then through the Irish Sea, south of the Bay of Biscay, Biscoy, Mediterranean to Malta, then picking up the mail in Gibraltar, then back through the Mediterranean to the port of Valletta, Malta. Then they went through the Suez Canal by way of Port Said. Victory in Japan was declared on September 2, 1945. They sailed the Gulf of Eden, the Arabian Sea, Indian Ocean to Ceylon, Sri Lanka, and then anchored in Trincole on the East Coast. As peace had been declared, their previous destination of Australia was diverted to the Indian Ocean, Strait of Malachi. The Japanese had placed mines all through this area, but they were the first ship in peacetime to pass through the straits, which lie between Sumatra and Malaysia. They then travelled north of Hong Kong and spent four months in the harbour for security as there were Japanese prisoners in Hong Kong. As an electrician, he was not called ashore to do guard duty of the Japanese. After leaving Hong Kong, they traveled to Milan. Japanese ships and their crews were in port that they had surrendered. They covered up all of their guns so the Japanese could not see their new radar equipment as everything they had on this ship was new. They then traveled to Guam, followed by Hawaii, then docked at Eskimo on the Vancouver Island. Wally was discharged on January 30th, 1946 at the HMCS Queen Naval Base in Regina and returned to Swift Current where he married Ellen Aiken on April 3rd, 1946. They had six children. He began working for Canada Post in 1947 as a letter carrier. He, de- he delivered the first door-to-door Canada Post letter in Swift Current. He enjoyed delivering the mail and talking to the people on his route as only veterans could apply to take his job, and he took his job with service and great pride. He had a mind for addresses and associated people within the city and their addresses, such as the 500 block of 5th Avenue Northwest. He later took on and became the postal officer supervisor, while he remained with the Canada Post for 38 years. 
Wally, for a lifetime member of the Legion, in his spare time, he enjoyed farming on the land with one of his longtime friends, traveling around the world with Ellen, and spending time with her and their friends and their family. He was very passionate about garage sales. He was also very generous and thoughtful of others, putting their needs before his own. In 2010, they moved to Prairie Pioneer Independent Living in Swift Current. He passed away on May 19th, 2015, at the age of 89. His family is proud and honored to unveil this banner in his remembrance. Thank you for your service, Wally M. Wally Shirley. <laughs> Sergeant Eldon Sidney Stewartson. Eldon lived in Saskatchewan in a family of one brother and one sister and two half-brothers and one half-sister. They lived in Shaunavon, Davidson, Regina, Swift Current, and Prince Albert. He enlisted at Dundurn and was placed in the 1622 Saskatchewan horse at the time. His brother recalls that the 1622 was based in Swift Current at the time he listed. Eldon had spent time with the militia in Swift Current before World War II. He, sp uh, he was sent to basic training after enlisting, and somewhere along the lines, he was transferred to another unit and earned his sergeant stripes. He went overseas and was transferred to Europe shortly after D-Day and served on a frontline unit. He was transferred to a British Army tank battalion. Eldon was killed in Belgium on no November 1st, 1944, while with that British battalion. He is buried in New Austrian Cemetery in Belgium, interestingly enough, as the only Canadian army in that cemetery. There is a lake named after Eldon, Stewartson Lake, north of Cree Lake in Saskatchewan. Thank you for your service, Sergeant Eldon Sidney Stewartson. Please join me in thanking these families for putting their distinguished servicemen into our Veterans Banner Program. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for joining us today. Please feel free to enjoy some refreshments. Uh, we are also currently showing a traveling exhibit developed by the Canadian War Museum titled Fighting in Flanders Field, Gas, Mud and Memory in our temporary gallery. Uh, and we'll also be hosting a Lunch and Learn on November 9th from 12 to 1, where local history teachers Riley Sharp and Chris Garner will be coming to teach and talk to us about veterans and Flanders Field. Thank you again for coming. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>